Hey guys, Sam here from keycommerce.com. Today, we're going to learn how to create search ads for your e-commerce store in Google Ads. I'm going to walk you through the whole process of doing the keyword research, writing the ads, planning out the ad copy, and then publishing these campaigns into your Google Ads account. Now, to help me write the ad copy, I'll be using a Google Sheets template that helps me see how many characters I can put in each headline and description. I'll leave a link to that in the description. You can go and get it yourself on my website. It's gonna make this whole process a lot easier. Without further ado, guys, let's jump into the video and let's build our campaigns. Let's go. Hey guys, Sam here from keycommerce.com. Let's now look at this template I've created for you guys to build out your search campaigns. First, we're gonna do our keyword research here and then we're gonna to go to this tab here and then actually write out our ad copy, the different ads that we're having for those keywords. I've created this, this template here for you guys. Um, you can access this in the description or in the comments section below. Um, I'm, make sure that when you access it, I made it so it's view only. You're gonna have to make a copy. So go to file, make a copy, super important. You won't be able to edit it unless you make your own copy. The reason is, of course, you know, there's gonna be a lot of people using this template now and I can't have everybody just editing it, you know, cause then it will just get messed up. So everyone needs to go make a copy and then get your own and then you can use this. This is just a really good guide. It allows you to just follow this workflow here and as well this calculates the actual length of the characters for your headlines and your descriptions to make sure that you're within the range that Google needs. So let's go over to the keywords tab here and let's go to the keyword planner. So to access the keyword planner, let me go back to my campaigns. To access the keyword planner, we're going to go to the tools and settings and we're going to go to keyword planner over here. On this page here, we're going to click discover new keywords and here we can actually search for the Search for some starting keywords, like it says try meal delivery or leather boots, or we can start with a website. I'm gonna illustrate both for you just so you can see what, what happens. Um, the website I'm gonna build my search campaigns for is called Bunnings Warehouse. If you're Australian, you'll know this one. I think it's in the UK as well. Um, they're a homewares company. They sell a lot of stuff like gardening tools and barbecue stuff, um, you know, or you know, bathroom, you know, stuff like taking care of your garden. Um, and in the spirit of my YouTube channel, I often talk about gardening just because my mom loves gardening, my grandma loves gardening, and I think it's a great niche to, to create a store for. I'm not sure if any of you guys have done this yet, uh, just because it has a really clear target audience. They've got very clear problems. And, um, you know, I think there's, you know, it's, it's really easy to make to make stuff for these guys. Um, anyway, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make uh, my ad campaign all about shears and pruning tools. So when you go to your garden, you want some, like this sort of stuff to, to lop us, to cut, cut down tree, like uh, branches and to prune um, everything, you know, you know hedge, shear the hedge, uh, grass, all that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, let's give it a go. So what you can do here is, like I said, you can start with some keywords or you can start with a website. Let me open this up in a new tab just so that I can do both at the same time. Um, let me do this. So I can just search for pruning tools and then it's going to show me all the related sort of keywords. And you can do a couple of them at, at once. Uh, it's asked for garden trimming tools. That's really, really cool. Um, pruning, garden equipment, stuff like that. Uh, but we can see here already that we've got some good uh, examples of stuff that we could try. So Secateurs is a, is a great one. Pruning shears, garden shears, pruning saw, good stuff. Pruner, pole pruner. Um, some of these stuff, are, these are actually pretty good examples. Uh, there's, a, there's a product brand still, that's a brand. Um, awesome, small pruning shears, that's a bit more segmented. So you can, it's only had 10, you know, it's only getting 10 monthly searches, which isn't much at all. It might not be worth actually making an ad group about that, but that, that sort of keyword is great because you would then show your ad that says small pruning shears by this brand, because it's small, you know, you'd talk about, because people, the people when they're searching with their queries, you've got to think they're segmenting themselves. They're telling you what they actually want and you need to make an ad that speaks to that person. It's relevant to that, that search query and then you send them to the right place. Okay, so we have this category page here, but if they're looking for special secateurs, you know, it looks like we can actually, yep, there's a secateurs page as well. So we would send them to this collections page here, which has all the secateurs. Really, really fantastic. Even better is if you could make this with a with a hero image and talk about the secateurs, why they're so good, and then show all the secateurs just so that you can do a bit of selling at the same time. Um, but yeah, this is really, really good. So uh, there's so many, so many um, opportunities here for what we can target. Let's go check out what it actually looks like when we use the website. Oh, wrong one. So let me go back into here, start with a website. Let's do this. I'm going to use use this page only. But if your website is is in a niche and is about a specific, you're selling it um, like one type of product, then 
uh, you could just use the entire site. But because this store has so many different categories, you know, there's all all this sort of stuff. It's going to pull up everything, and I just want to see the the, the garden tools, the the shears and pruning tools. So let's let's pull this up. Cool. So it's come up with some ideas here. So garden tools, that's much more general. Um, so if I was only selling, if I was selling garden tools in general, then yes, that would be a good keyword. And I would send them maybe to a homepage um, or a collections page. Uh, garden shears, that's much more targeted, good stuff. Really, really good. It's quite similar to what we actually came up with here. I recommend doing both just because you'll find some ideas on both that are really, really fantastic. Um, but we can see here the traffic varies quite a lot. There's some that have, you know, 140, 50, um, but there's some that go all the way up to 6,000, which is huge. What you can do, guys, is that this one here has 50 best pruning shears. You can put that in the same ad group as, as uh, pruning shears. If there's one that says pruning shears. Let's have a look. Uh, it's probably around here somewhere. Uh, but yeah, you can put, you can combine keywords into different ad groups um, and still target those. And, uh, and that, that's a really good idea. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here. And I'm going to think about, okay, I want to target maybe second tiers because like you, 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 that, here's, here's how it works, guys. On one hand, you're dealing with all the market. This is, this is what people are using to search to potentially find your products. But you also have your products. So you can't just target, you know, if you don't sell second tiers, but you sell only pruning shears, um, then you don't want to just target that keyword and then try and get people to buy pruning shears. Really bad idea because people are often going in knowing they want second tiers, especially for second, you know, there's maybe there's some people that could be convinced, but generally they're for a different job. You know, pruning, uh, second tiers, I, I believe, you know, mostly for pruning um, like roses and, and uh, you know, other plants and stuff like that when the shears... Where are the shears? Head shears. Uh, that's more for like trimming hedges and stuff like that. Totally different job, even though it sounds pretty similar to me, but pretty different job. And those people aren't going to be, you know, they're not going to use that as a substitute for that, that job. Um, so what I would do is make sure that you consider your website and what you're selling as well as the market. And a good way to plan out these campaigns is to go to your website and look. This is these is the, the different categories in garden tools and look at the categories. And that's a good way to split up your campaigns um, and think about, you know, the buying intent. What I'm doing going to do here is I'm going to make this campaign about pruning tools um, and I'm going to do a an ad group about secateurs and let's do one about uh, loppers. That sounds pretty good too. So secateurs and loppers. So if that's the case, then I'm going to grab secateurs and I'm going to go and, and, and search for secateurs here. Let's see if that changes things a little bit. There we go. Oh, look, this is even more, even more targeted, more segmented. It's got different types of, you got some, uh, you know, Japanese secateurs. So maybe the Japanese secateurs are really good. They're known for being good. Fist guys, that's probably a brand. Electric, oh, that's a different product type. Another brand, you know, this is long handle. So that's a, a feature. See what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm looking at what are people searching and how can I craft my campaign to send them to the right place? And I'm going to be using the in the ad copy to speak about these things. So Japanese secateurs, I'm going to say, uh, check out our, our Japanese secateurs collection if you have that. So if I look at the secateurs here, oh, Felco, that was a, a brand that I saw, Felco 2 secateurs. So that's something that people are searching for. There's the Felco 2. So I would create, and let's do it now, guys. So anyway, what I'm going to do, there's so much to do here. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these. and I'm gonna copy them and I'm just gonna put them over here. So you can put in the search volume if you like, uh, that's really up to you, go through and do it. There's probably a way to copy and paste this, but you know, I'm not gonna spend this whole video trying to figure that out. Um, but yeah, you can copy that, paste it over here. Um, there used to be a way to, to just copy it over really easily, but maybe the interface has changed since then. Uh, but now we have these keywords here. What I like to do is then, I like to have them there just to know what I started with. Then I go over to the ad copywriting and I go over here to the keyword section, I put them in there. So these are ones I wanna I wanna target with my second tiers. I think maybe I might not even touch the 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 lopping ones and I'll just focus on second tiers. You know, it takes it's it's a process that you're going to have to go through for your store and build out these ad groups based on what you're selling here. Um, I wouldn't recommend putting second tiers and loppers in the same ad group and try and target the same traffic. That's just not gonna be a good thing. Um, but here, something to keep in mind, guys, is the actual volume of traffic. So if you look at this, these ones here, total probably have maybe three to 4,000 in total traffic per month um, searches. You know, you're going to have to really consider, um, you know, sometimes you'll create 
campaigns and your click-through rate may be like three to five percent sometimes up to ten percent if you've got a fantastic ad and there's not much competition but three to five percent of four thousand uh what's that 200 clicks per month that's that's not a lot um that's not really a lot so what you would do here is you would target this you'd have also have a shopping campaign um but you would also build this out based on all these other queries here if i go by average monthly searches second tiers by itself that's got 5,400. You know, Secateurs Bunnings as well. Uh, this is because this is a, a common place to buy your Secateurs Bunnings Warehouse. That's a brand. You would also have an ad group about that. But you know, once you start filtering, you'll see that there's this many searches. Uh, but Secateurs by itself, that's also a search query that I want to have. So let me just get that without the formatting. So that's one um, that I really want to test that because there are people that are going to search that that are actually buying, but maybe it, it doesn't indicate buying intent. Like best secateurs, that's someone that's obviously looking for high quality, looking for something, they're looking for the best option. That's a good in uh, good indication that there's intent there to purchase. Secateurs by itself could be someone researching. Maybe they've heard about secateurs and want to know what they are. Um, who knows? Like maybe they're, they've they heard the word secateurs and they're like, what does it actually mean? And then they're Googling it. So that's what, what you want to keep in mind. Something else I want to say, guys, is that there's these... Uh, bid recommendations here that's just that's really a guide i would take that with a grain of salt because your bid and i talk about this in my videos your bid is so strongly influenced and affected by your quality score for these keywords if you optimize and improve your account your quality score is going to increase and that's going to mean your cost per click is going to decrease because google is going to reward you from for having better ads and better ads it's metric for identifying if you've got good ads that are highly relevant you've got a good, good landing page and people are clicking your ad is the quality score. I've got a video on quality score. I'll put that in the description. Go check that out. But I use this as a guide for these ones here. I would potentially start this one here, sharpening secateurs. Oh, interesting. For, for these ones here, I would start potentially with 50 cents to a dollar, just out of the gate, just to collect some data. So let me put in 75 cents here. Oh, it's rounded up. And I'm going to copy that for all of these. And you know, what I like to do is I'll start out the gate with a bid like this, 75 cents, and then I'll actually optimize based on how these, these keywords perform. And once you start getting conversions, you'll be able to calculate your max CPC. There's a formula for doing this. I talk about doing this in my um, shopping bid strategy, and you can apply the same sort of logic and formula to your search campaigns as well where you can use the actual conversion rate, um, the average CPC, um, the cost per acquisition to actually, and your profit margin to calculate the maximum you should be paying to break even. Um, let's do this. So product searches, secateurs. Awesome. So I'm going to create a camp. So this is how I plan it out. So I'll have all these keywords here and let's create, say, um, two, uh, two different um, ads per per ad group. So I'm going to split these out like this. You can do up to three, but especially when you have less traffic, you want to be able to test ads more quickly. And so you can do three at a time. That's fine. Um, but you know, if you, if you, uh, don't have much traffic, it's just going to take much longer to find a winner because you're spreading out those clicks over three ads rather than two. Cool. So these are all going to be my ad groups and then they're all going to be in this campaign here. And then what I'll do here is I'll have two per ad group, you see the logic behind this as I start building this out. So here we go. And this one down there. Awesome. So now we have um, all our ad groups planned out, um, which is fantastic. And so now we're going to start planning out our headlines. This is how I like to do it, guys. I like to put the actual, the, key, the keyword, this is the keyword I'm targeting. Basically, I like to put that in the actual first headline. It's going to get people's attention um, and get, get people to realize that you've made People can see when they're going to be looking at all the ads and they're going to be thinking, which one should I click to get me what I need? Um, with Felco Secateurs, it's clearly a product search search query because there's Felco over here. Um, so what I would do is go back and I would put in um, uh, buy Felco Secateurs online. So it's come up with 26. You have up to 30 characters. What you can also do here, guys, is these Felco Secateurs so Felco is probably Felco sec. Uh, I always forget how to spell secateurs. So let's check out. There's probably some ads already. So they're here, a couple of ads. Um, what I would love to do. So they've got the organic ranking, which is awesome. What I like to do is put the sometimes put the registered trademark. So and this is a great way. Once you find it, where can I get it? Trademark. 
symbol. So copying that, you know, this, this can uh, be a great way to attract a bit of attention, especially if it's, if it's a brand name and you're, you're allowed to put that in your ad, uh, by, you know, this is a good, good way to attract attention because that's going to stick out. Just like if you put numbers in your ads, it's going to really stick out in the results. I'm not sure if there are any in that past one that no, doesn't have any. Uh, but see these guys, what I've searched for Felco Secateurs and they've put high quality pruning Secateurs, ARS Japan, Felco and Barco. So they've put in, they're, they're, they have not created a targeted ads about Felco. They're probably targeting, um, probably targeting Secateurs themselves. Let's maybe, maybe not. They might be targeting Secateurs, but they haven't created. So Google's not showing me the ads for this, this search query. Uh, sometimes it does that. Here we go. No, I don't see it, that ad. So it's also good to do a bit of research, guys. I, I really I recommend that. Okay, um, going back. So what's happening here is these guys maybe are bidding on Felco Secateurs. They've probably got an ad group that has much, they're, they're targeting um, all these different brands and they put it into one ad group, but it's not a targeted ad because someone's going to see ARS Japan, maybe uh, Barco. But if you put one that said high quality printing Secateurs, um, felt the high quality Felco pruning secateurs, that's going to get much more attention. It's going to get better clicks. It's going to get a better quality score as well. I wonder where they're sending me. Let's check out the actual landing page. So bypass secateurs. So they've got all these different brands here. So if you think about this guys, if I'm looking for Felco secateurs, I want to see an ad about Felco secateurs. I want to get sent to a page that has uh, Felco secateurs. So what you can actually do is go Felco. Well, if I go to brand, this might work. Let's check this out. Awesome. So what you can do here is actually use this page. So you already imp pre-inputted the search so that someone actually uh, goes to this page that has the actual uh, secretaire. So let's try that out. So let's put that in there. Um, or you can create a collections page um, with Felco Secateurs. That's what I actually do recommend. Um, just because then you can make it look a bit nicer. You can have a hero image that says Felco Secateurs. That's just going to be a bit better. Cool. Um, so going back to the ad copy. So buy Felco Secateurs online. Um, we can put, then I like to put in some sort of benefits or features or think about what people are looking for. Highest quality pruning Secateurs. That's 33, so that's going to be need to go lower. So 30, there we go. So we're under 30. So you can have up to 30 characters for your headlines, and then up to I think it's I'm pretty sure it's 90. Yeah, it's 90 for your descriptions. Uh, and this is important now because it makes it so much easier for us to plan these out. Because just like what happened then, you know, I changed that from highest to high quality pruning secateurs. Um, 100% money back guarantee. So that's something you can put in there as well. Um, our Felco Secateurs have a lifetime guarantee. So what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm putting in benefits and I'm really thinking about what do people really care about? Like if they're buying Felco, it's often probably because it's a really high quality brand, they're looking for high quality Secateurs and having some sort of guarantee like that is really, really good too. They're also probably thinking about shipping as well. Um, like can they get these Secateurs? How long does it take? So you could put in something like um, fast free delivery in three days. I like to capitalize some of the words um, in there as well to make them stand out. So that's 28 characters. That's fine. Um, Felco, Secateurs, um, probably Pruning, Secateurs, uh, Bunnings Warehouse. Um, nope, that's not going to work. Bunnings Warehouse. Uh, maybe I might even put in a small one like buy online. No, nope, that's not going to work. So I'm just putting Bunnings Warehouse because I know this brand is really strong. Um, so I'll put in Bunnings Warehouse. I don't recommend putting Bunnings Warehouse unless well, you know, don't put in Bunnings Warehouse, but for your own brand, um, and many stores that we work with, they, they do have a strong brand and we will put it in there because often maybe someone's heard about them before or they've already seen a different ad as well. So we'll put in Bunnings where like the actual store name, but um, for you, it depends on your store how strong that is. But for this one, let me just put in here for now. I'll try out some other uh, headlines um, in some other ads too so you can see what, a, what are the potential um, headlines you can use. For the description, 
this is going to be a bit more conversational, a bit more uh, selling the product. Um, what I like to do, the one thing to remember is at the end of description two, it, you know, I like to put in a call to action like buy now or shop here, shop online now. Uh, but let's, let's start writing this. So I'm just going to um, test out some different ideas. And this is something that you just, you'll have to learn how to write this over time. I recommend a few different books. Uh, like there's a book called Cash Advertising. You can get it on Amazon. I really recommend this book for ad copywriting as well, guys. Um, ca ca like a, ad copywriting is a full, uh, it's, it's a whole field. You know, there are people that get paid a lot of money to do this. I recommend reading this book. This is the best by far the full overview of good copywriting uh, for digital marketing basically. And it just helps so much for writing your ads. I recommend getting this, um, you know, just spending a couple of bucks. It's really, really worth it. And it basically condenses everything into like a nice package for you to get all the, the bare bones foundational stuff that you need to write good ads. And it helps with your website as well. So let's let's keep going. So our Philco secretaries have a lifetime guarantee um, and with free, Express shipping in three days. Buy now. Cool. So that's gone over. Our focus. Um, our fo lifetime guarantee with free shipping. So 92. Free, free and three day with three day free express shipping. Cool. So see what I'm doing here is I'm arranging the different uh, words to make sure it fits under 90 days. Really important guys. So I'm going to put, I'm not going to put buy now here. I'm going to put this, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this here and then I'm going to copy this over and put this in uh, this one here. And then I'm going to change description one to need quality um, Australia. I don't know if they're made in Australia, probably not, but let me just put this in here. Uh, second tiers to get uh, for your pruning job. This is like a very basic example. So what you can do, oops, is uh, go through and actually uh, use uh, capitalize uh, words to highlight different words that are really important. You want them to stick out. Need quality Australian made secateurs for your pruning job. Our Felco secateurs have a lifetime guarantee with three day free shipping, free express shipping by now. And then it sends them to this final URL. The part, this last bit here, the path one and path two, this is the actual uh, path that's, that you'll see in the actual ads. So let me see if I can find an example here. Let me go back here. So you see this bit here, it says bypass secateurs. See, if I go to the actual page, it, it's weird. It's like tag one category, blah, blah, blah. It's like all this stuff here, but the actual ad is saying this, and this is because Google allows you to change this. It's called the display URL. And then this is the final URL. So in their, their account, they've got this as their actual final URL. This is just the, uh, this attribution like bit query at the end that's, that helps uh, track. Um, but you know, this bit here, that's what the, where they actually get sent. And then this is a display URL. So that's, that explains that. And so over here, this is the path. So you've got two different bits. You've got, this is the path one and that's path two. So path one, path two. So what we can do here is, is put in uh, Seca tears, oops. And then Felco. So it, when they see that, it's going to look it's going to look like it's the exact, you know, sending them to the exact right place. Um, and it's even though they're actually going to go to this page, which is okay. Um, and what I'm doing there is I'm actually putting the category first, executives, and then Felco. I just think that's going to look nicer in the ad ads. You can test out different variations. It's really up to you. Um, this is what I like to do. Um, so Felco printing secretaries, Bunnings Warehouse, fast free delivering in three days. And you'll see here that I've got the express shipping over here. And then I've also got the free delivery because for say for this store, this is just an example. But you're going to think about what are the real benefits? What are people looking for? What are their desires, their pain points? And what can you really highlight in your ads to really show them that you've got the solution to their problem? This is where I'm coming from here. I'm imagining it now, and this is just an example because it may not be true, um, but I'm imagining now that these people searching really want to get these pruning shears, these secateurs today. Like they want to get them as soon as possible. Maybe it's um, it's Friday and they've just started working in their garden after work and they're just like, okay, um, I really need to get these secateurs. Mine are gone blunt or what have you. I want to get that to them as quick as possible. So maybe three days, maybe I could even get express shipping and do it in, in next day delivery so that they can order on Friday and get it on, on Saturday and then get some work done over the weekend. And see what I've done there is I've thought about my target market. What are they looking for? Their big pains and how can I I service them in the best way possible. Let's keep going with the ads. So the next one here is that um, I really want to highlight the quality. So you see here that I'm really thinking about 
the, the, the different uh, benefits of this product here. And it's just an example because you're gonna have to do it for your own product, but uh, I'm focusing on quality, uh, delivery, um, and uh, potentially what I might do is also like affordability. So uh, what I could do here in this one is um, talk about here, uh, uh, find a cheaper, find the, find our tools else where for cheaper and we'll take 10% off. We'll beat it by 10% shop. Uh, I could always forget how to, how to pronounce uh, secateurs now. So awesome. So find our tools elsewhere for cheaper and we'll beat it by 10%. So like a price beat guarantee. So there, there are different ways you could word that, but that's how I'm going to do it here. Find our tools elsewhere. Awesome. Shop secateurs now. Awesome. And so that's going to be about the price. And I want to do another one about the quality. So uh, tools you only need to buy once with a lifetime guarantee high quality stainless steel 87 perfect and i'm also going to put in a bullet point at the end um, awesome fantastic so i'm going to highlight a few a uh, few of these words with camel case oh, i think this is actually title i can't remember what it's called yeah let's just highlight all of these Fantastic. Yeah, so that's good. So I'd love to test out these ads, see how they go. And guys, don't, you wanna write good ads and read, read, read uh, Cash Advertising. You know, that's a great book about this. I'm not putting too much effort now into planning out my ad copy because I, I haven't done enough research to figure out who exactly I'm selling to. I really recommend you go through my free course, Product Page Mastery. Uh, let, me, let me pull it up here. So in this course, I actually take you through how to uh, identify your target market, how to talk to your customers and figure out who they are. Um, it's a free course, totally free. It's on my website. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description as well. But I take you through this, how to figure out all their pain points and all that sort of stuff. And you're going to use that to uh, craft these ads. And like these ads, they're okay, but they're not, you know, they're not going to win any awards or anything like that because, and I didn't spell second tiers here properly. Second tiers. So they're not going to be, you know, they're not going to blow anyone away just because I don't know <laughs> this market well enough to actually do that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the same funnel URL, but what you can also do is, uh, I like to do the same path. That's totally fine. What you can do here is actually send them to a different page. Maybe send them to a specific product page. Maybe there's one, uh, Felco secateurs, maybe the two, I saw that being searched. Maybe that's one that gets so like this, so many people, it's like the best selling product on your store. Well, what you can do is just send them straight to this page here rather than sending them to uh, the, the category page. And you can test that out, which is a really good idea. Anyway, so there's that one. Let me do uh, another one here, a more general search query. Um, but you're gonna see, like, I plan this out for all of these, but it's quite a similar process for all of them. What you can also do guys is, uh, and we'll, we'll often do this, is once we have some really great copy for the descriptions and some of the headlines, we can then go and copy and paste this this, uh, all the way down and test this out for all of them. Um, especially if you've, if you've really identified your target market, what their pain points are, and you've written great ad copy that really speaks to these people, then you can go through and actually use the same ad copy for a lot of these, these ad groups, because it's going to be very similar. Best secateurs, Felco secateurs, they're looking for secateurs. They probably want high quality. They probably care about affordability, you know, especially if you're targeting a certain niche, but there are going to be variations. So, uh, you know, electric secateurs, you know, they, of course they care about quality and affordability, but if they're looking for electric, maybe um, they're happy to spend a bit more money. Uh, maybe they really care about the guarantee because it's electrical and they don't want it to, to break. Uh, maybe they care about it being waterproof. Maybe that's a thing where secateurs can be, can be waterproof. I'm not sure. And that's where you would highlight that in your ads as well. Let's do one more. So garden secateurs. So what we would do for this one is that, let me just do this right now. So I'm going to go to the secateurs page. And for this one, we would send them straight to this, this, uh, this category page here. So uh, secateurs, and I'm just going to put this in right now in the funnel URL. Oops, boom. So right in there, like there. And uh, what I can do is I'm just going to put it in path one. I'm not going to put in a path two for that one. You can if you want. The advantage there, it takes this takes up a little bit more space. You know, the longer it is. But honestly, it's it's fine. I don't really mind too much. Um, so garden secateurs. Buy Garden Secateurs online, 27, awesome. 
uh, qu uh, quality garden secateurs. Cool. Um, so what I'm going to do here is garden secateurs best garden. Hmm. Let me let me think about what I can write here. So what you could do is this is a a real. So maybe these gardeners are actually caring about. Uh, really, they want really high quality um, gardening tools. They want really high quality garden secateurs. Um, tools made by gardeners for gardeners. That's 32, so we might be able to... <laughs> it's going to look really sick. Made by gardeners for gardeners. That's not the uh, the nicest way to put it, but um, that's one example. So maybe if it's yourself made, made by surfers for surfers, you know, that's, it. that's one that you could put in there. Um, Lifetime tool guarantee. Stainless steel um, construction. And what you can do here, uh, actually what would be a really cool thing is especially if people are searching for brands, Felco. So for example, checking out this one, ARS Japan. Awesome. Uh, and Barco. Cool, so that's 28. So people are gonna recognize these brands, probably, uh, especially if they're a gardener. Maybe not, some don't, uh, but that's a good thing to put in there because you're showing off like what products you have, people are gonna click through, and then you do have those products. Stainless steel construction, um, lifetime tool guarantee. Um, what's, let's do fast three, uh, let's do next day express literacy 30. Oh, right on it, that's awesome, cool. Um, so there we go. If you can't see this one here, all you have to do is just select this and drag down. It's then going to calculate it for this row. See how it says len five, len L five. It's because it's, and it's highlighting this one here. So that len, it calculates the actual length of the text. So that's why it's the number. Cool. So uh, description one. So let's do um, every tool is uniquely designed and made in Oz to ensure the highest quality. 78s, make do Australia, because I'm targeting Australians here. And you know, I'm not gonna lie here, that's gonna really not be good. So I'm it, it, make sure that it actually is, does, like if you're doing made in the USA or made wherever, make sure it actually is. Don't just lie here to try and get those clicks, guys. You know, Google's gonna not be happy with you. They, they catch you doing that. Cool, so every tool is uniquely designed and made in Australia to show the highest uh, quality. Um, biggest and best. Uh, garden secretary range range in Australia shop online now cool so that's only 69 I could probably make that a bit longer um, but yeah that's fine what I'm doing here is I'm using second garden secretary as the actual keyword in the copy this is really important for improving the ad relevancy uh, and making sure we get that high quality score so description one again we only sell tools that we use ourselves. The biggest range, no, let's not do that. Um, what could I write? The job done right the first time. Get the job, get the pruning job done that's gonna be awesome done right the first time fantastic cool same thing just adding in capitals to highlight you can you can test this out yourself and see what works for you I recommend trying out both Awesome, so 89, so we, we came in really nicely. And let's do the last description here. So we've talked about high quality brands. Um, get new garden secretaries by, by tomorrow, our next day express shipping by online now. Awesome. Fantastic. 
and that's I like to do this. I wonder if that could fit. Oh no. Did you remove this? Buy second tiers now. Yep, that works. What I'll do here is shop second tiers now. Fantastic. There we go, guys. So uh, get new garden second tiers by tomorrow with next day express shipping. Shop second tiers now. Fantastic. There are two different uh, ad groups here. So now I've got those two in there all ready to go. I've got the campaign these ad groups, you're going to go through and do this for all your ad groups. Now, something else to keep in mind is that uh, once you make your ad group, you know, there may be other um, keywords that you could also target here um, that are in this the, the theme like Felco 2, Felco Second Tiers. When you create this as say a phrase match or a broad match modified, I'm going to go through that in a second. That's, that's going to, uh, you're going to get a lot of people clicking that are searching for other things that aren't just Velcro second tiers exactly. And this is the beauty of using keywords and Google's gonna show you for all these different people related to your, your actual keywords. You can then look at the results and then plan out new ad groups or add them into this ad group and then bid on them directly. I've got a video where I talk about this. It's called Keyword Mining. I actually just filmed that this morning. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. It's all about how to mine your campaigns for uh, data, how to mine the search terms report. And you can do this for your shopping campaign to create your search campaign, or you can do do it in your search campaign too. Anyway, let's go into our account now and let's actually build out uh, this in the actual, in the account. Let's go. So let me jump over to um, my Google Ads account. Let me go back to the main, the main uh, view of the campaigns. Let's create a new campaign. I'm going to put this, the, the goal is going to be sales. doesn't matter too much about that. And then the campaign type is going to be a search campaign. Okay. Um, so we're going to select the ways you'd like to reach your goal. Uh, it's going to be website visits. Uh, let's just go continue. Just going to ignore this. Okay. I'm just going to do it without a goal. You know, I think it's because I don't have, okay. Website visits. Okay. We have to put in the website. Sorry guys. Let me put this in. Awesome. Fantastic. Okay, cool. Campaign name. So we're just going to put this in product searches, second tiers, uh, search network. We're not going to use the search partners or display network. The reason for this is because this is going to show you on search partners, which is uh, like there's Gumtree is one. I think Yahoo is another one. These are other uh, search platforms that Google has a partnership with where it can show your ads. This can perform. I've seen it work maybe I think once I audited an account, but generally this performs worse off than, uh, than regular Google ads campaigns. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't try it, but I recommend if this is your first search campaign, don't use it because you want to concentrate all your budget, all those, all, all that budget into the clicks on Google optimize that first and then test out these other, these other, um, networks here. Same for the display network. Don't use that. Um, I recommend just keeping it uh, fully fresh on Google. Cool. Four locations, target your location. I'm in Australia. So I'm going to target Australia. Um, make sure you select this second one here. I go through this in a lot of my videos, but this is going to only target people that are in Australia. And this is going to target this first one, which is the default is going to target people who are interested in Australia. People that have maybe searched for a hotel in Sydney and they're overseas and they're looking to come to Australia. Um, it's going to be hard to get into Australia right now because all the borders are closed, but yeah, trying to get into Australia and then they're potentially going to see your ad. Not, it's not guaranteed, but there's potential there. And once I did order an account, I downloaded all their geographic data to find out how much they'd wasted on this one. It was about five to 10%. Um, and that was you know, a decent amount of money per year that they'd spent uh, on people that were outside their store location and that could never actually purchase from them. And they're paying for all these clicks. So they immediately just save their budget by just changing that. Um, leave this languages. That's fine. Uh, budget. I'm going to start up this campaign. I like to start with, I, I do recommend for your whole account, uh, having at least 1500 to a $3,000 which is, you know, 500 to hundred dollars per day. Um, but if, you know, it's, it's just really, it's going to take more time, you know, the lower your budget, say if you only had $10 and your clicks are $1 each, you're going to get potentially 10 clicks per day. Well, it's going to take you 20 days to get something that's really statistically significant, like 200 clicks. So it's just going to take much longer, but sometimes there's just not enough traffic there, but I recommend minimum $10 a day, but up to say $50 if possible at the start. Um, it's just, it's just going to limit how quickly you get that, that data coming through. Um, so bidding, I like to start with, 
uh, bu- 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 let's see if we can actually, no, no, no. Okay, so Google keeps changing this. This is why, you know, and just like before when I tried to set up the campaign and it's asked me for the goal, Google is constantly changing the interface and uh, it's, it's trying to get you to do what they want you to do. I recommend for your first campaign, don't use maximize clicks. Do not use maximize clicks. Use manual CPC. Uh, I, I like to include uh, enhanced CPC. Make sure conversion tracking is set up. That's over here. I've got a video that shows you how to set this up for your Shopify store with Google Analytics. I recommend going through that. I'll put a link in the description as well, guys. But set up with manual CPC just to start. And I recommend optimizing your bids on a manual basis to start off with. Um, that's pretty much everything there. That's all fine. Um, yeah, that's fine. Um, in terms of the ad extensions, I've got a video on how to add ad extensions. I recommend watching that as well. That's going to be in the description. A lot of videos in the description, guys. But yeah, set up your ad extensions because that makes your ad much bigger. So you see here, um, this these are uh, site link extensions here. Um, there's a phone number extension there. Um, full range of... Blah, 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 blah. I think this looks like the call ad extensions too, but that could be part of the description. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, these here, uh, these are, are also ad extensions here and just cr- makes your ad bigger and bigger. See how much bigger this one is than this one. It's a good 20, 30% bigger, especially once you have all the, the ad extensions, you're just going to take up all this space and you're just going to get way more clicks because of that. Um, let me go back in here. So we don't have them right now, but you can add them. Check out that video. Let's create our campaign. It's then going to take us to the ad group, uh, creation. Awesome. Our ad group, we're just going to name that Felco Secateurs. Cool. And I like to capitalize it so it doesn't look bad, but that's just me being, um, you know, be, me being me. So, okay. Oh, this is interesting. Google can help you get relevant keywords. No, I'm not going to do that for right now. No, go back, go back. I'm going to leave. The, this looks like some sort of guide. I'm not going to use that right now because I'm going to walk you through it. 75 cents for my bids. Awesome. Remove the dollar sign. Cool. Keywords. Enter keywords manually. So you can actually do the research here. I recommend doing what we're doing and actually adding it manually. So Felco Secretaries is gonna be my keyword. So I'm gonna use do this as a phrase match. I'm also gonna add exact match and I'm also going to add broad match modified. I'll explain what I'm doing here. This is really important. So this is broad match modified when you add a plus sign before each word. So if you had, uh, if your keyword was uh, Felco Secateurs online, that could be a keyword as well. You would also add a plus sign before online as well, but I'm just going to keep it as Felco Secateurs. It's giving me an estimation. You know, there's not many people searching for Felco Secateurs. I'd love to see, so I, I'd run this anyway and see. It's only going to be one ad group. It's not like you're dedicating a whole campaign to this. You'll have to see uh, two per date. That's that's pretty low. Like uh, That's actually really low. Um, but yeah, we would uh, we would test that out. It also depends on your, like, depends on uh, your quality score, uh, but you know, 75 cents per day, it's saying the average CPC, that's interesting. We'll see, uh, you know, Google will say all, all this stuff, but until you actually run these campaigns, uh, you won't know for sure. Um, so Felco Secateurs, the, this is what's called match types. Now I'm making a video on match types. I'll leave a link to that in the description once it's finished. Basically what this is, is it's your way of telling Google what search queries you want to show for. There's this bit here, this is match types, help control, help control which searches can trigger your ads. Got broad match, keyword, uh, phrase match, and exact match here. This should be a page that tells you more about it. Um, but this Google can be confusing sometimes. Oh, this isn't too bad. Yeah, so check out this link here, guys. I recommend checking it out. Basically, you have these uh, four different types. And you know, even though it says three types here, there's actually a fourth one, which is broad match modified. Basically, it's your way of telling Google what words you want to show for. So if you use exact match, this is when you put these square brackets around your ad, like uh, women's, women's hats. It means that you're going to show for the exact, that exact query. So women's hats. Um, so it's going to show four women's hats and it looks like, oh man, <laughs> Google keeps changing the rules and they're now letting variations. And this really made a lot of people in the Google ads community very angry. <laughs> oh man, this sucks. Um, yeah. So I could explain this. So basically, yeah, they made it so that you can have variations, close variations of that exact term with the same meaning, like ladies hats, women's hats, hats for women, hats for women. When people would much, like a lot of media buyers like me would much more, would much rather be able to see the exact search query and know exactly what what we're bidding on, uh, but you'll see here, basically the idea is this, exact match is much closer to the actual query. See, women's hats is very close to all of these. Phrase match is where you have women's hats, but then you can add words on either side. Blue women's hats, 
buy hats for women, ladies hats on sales. Oh man, this is getting, it's getting real bad. Uh, but yeah, you can add words on either side as well as have variations with the same meaning. Broad match modified, that's where you can also have words on either side and you give uh, Google much more control about the order of the words. So you can have different order as well as the actual, uh, ver the difference in variations uh, of the, those ads. So it, it gives you, it gives Google a bit more freedom. And then broad match, this is super free. So Google can really go and just make uh, winter headwear for women. You know, that's much different than women's scarves. You know, that's really different from women's hats, guys. Women's clothing, oh, that's gonna be super general. See how these, these just have very different intent. Uh, I've seen it work because Google, over time it uses your conversion data and it can work. Um, but especially if you want to save money in the short term with your budget, I recommend going more exact match and having more control. Oh man, there's a, there's, Google's always changing the rules. So um, yeah, it's, it's what they do. Um, and they're making more money out of it because um, when you have more control, you can really choose the best keywords you want to work with. And that just means it makes you more profitable and you're not wasting money when Google, it's in their best interest to make more revenue. And so they can get uh, advertisers to spend more money, especially on clicks that it want while still being profitable. That's that's better for them. Anyway, that's a whole rant. Um, we're gonna start off with these, and the reason I put all of these in here is a method called the SCAG single keyword ad group method. It's a really good way to start if you're just new because it just makes it really logical. The idea here is that you'll have one keyword per ad group, and you'll have these three variations, and these three variations are gonna 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 target this keyword, but have different variability variation in what each one actually brings in in terms of search queries. Now we can then adjust the bids individually for these, but they're all going to bring in Felco related, you know, search, search, uh, search terms, which is great. I'm also going to add the, the other ad group at the same time, just so that we have them here. So the garden secateurs, let's do that. Same thing, 75 cents. I like to capitalize the ad group name, add them manually, same thing, three, and let's do exact match phrase and broad match modified BMM. Same thing here guys. Um, and then let's go save and continue. We're then going to build out our ads. All right guys, let's now click continue, save and continue. All right, now it's getting, it's uh, asking us here for text ads or responsive search ads. You can do responsive search ads. Maybe it's shown that already. You'll have a button up here that asks you if you want to switch to text ads. Responsive search ads can be really, really good. That's where Google's gonna rotate the different parts of your ad to, to find what works. Uh, that's really good if you want Google to figure out. Uh, what I like to do is I like to see what ads work and test it myself. So we'll test out different headlines, different descriptions, um, and, and swap them out ourselves. I'm gonna do that now this way, just because that's how uh, I've, I've uh, created them here. So that just makes more sense. Cool, so for Selco uh, Secateurs, final URL, path one down here. And then I'm going to go through and add these headlines. So the first one here by Felco Secateurs, fantastic. Get that in there. Super easy. And then description one and description two. Then shows you what your ad looks like over here, which is good. Um, awesome. Done. Let's create the next one. It's pulling in the actual URL already for us, which is cool. Um, yeah, that's the same URL. So that's fine. Uh, it's pulling in the same display, that's cool. It's pulled in the headline, but we're gonna test out a different headline. So Bunnings Warehouse is the second one, fast free delivery in three days, and then the description. So it's pulled in that one where, whoops, I need to select that. Description two, awesome. So there we go, that's in there, that's looking really, really good. Um, done, so I've created my two ads for the Felco Secateurs ad group. Let's now create them for the uh, Garden Secateurs. So let's go through headline one, headline two, headline three, description one, description two. You're just gonna have to do this for yourself, guys. I know this is probably pretty boring, but it's what you gotta do. Put them all in, just copy and paste. That's all it is, super, super easy. That's all in there, done, and create the next ad, and let's do the last one. You're gonna do this for all your ads. You've, you've planned them already out, so it makes it really easy just to copy and paste them in. If you, I find that if you write this out yourself in the actual interface, I just get, you know, it's much harder for me to see the full picture. I like to put them in the in this sheet just because it makes it much easier for me to plan out and swap things out, copy and paste. It's just so much more quicker for me. Cool, so this one's copied that in already, the, the URL, so let's do done. Awesome, we have these two ads, save and continue. We're then going to review it. There it goes, it's checking everything. Awesome, cool, let's just provide this estimate, but let's run it and let's see how it goes. Awesome, so now we have our campaign. 
If we go to the actual ad group level, you'll see those two ad groups there all ready to go. You'll have the, the default max CPC here, but you'll also edit it on the uh, the actual ad group, the keyword level. So that's there right like that. That's looking fantastic, looking really good. Um, yeah, that's looking good guys. So that's how you create your search campaigns here in Google ads um, and do all the keyword research, the planning, everything like that, all done in one one go. Hope that was helpful guys. I really recommend reading the cash advertising book. I'll leave a link to that in the description so you can go check it out. Um, a bunch of my subscribers have gone through that and have said that it's a great book. It's helped them a lot. It helped me. I read it years ago. You know, it was released in 20, 2008, man. It was like, I read it years ago. Fantastic, really helpful for me, um, and it really gets your your mindset straight. Go through that and do it for your own um, own um, own store. Anyway, guys, that's it. I hope that helps. Hey guys, it's now been about a week, and I went in to check on my account, and I actually used this account for a little, tiny bit of branding stuff for my own brand, and I made this campaign, the, the the gardening campaign, in this account, and because I'm an absolute idiot, I forgot to pause it after I filmed the video, so I actually spent about forty dollars on this campaign for a brand that I don't actually, they're not a client, but warehouse I don't, I don't work for them but i started running ads for them because i'm an idiot and i didn't pause that campaign i thought hey might as well just help you guys out and use the data that i collected um to teach you a bit about what you can do after you launch the campaign so it's not all to waste um so yeah so you see 40 38 dollars 68 cents it's been running for about a week that's why it had a massive increase in clicks here because of course we're bidding on something uh, different from the original campaign which is just a branding campaign nothing special about that um, and of course we don't have conversion tracking so we won't be able to see what actually converted but we'll, we'll be able to get an idea a bit about how we set things up and the performance and the first thing off the bat is that we spent a lot of time writing the ad copy there in those ads spent a lot of time really thinking about the, the buyer persona what their needs are and I just use it as an example and I just kind of spitballed what I think that this person will be interested in. Of course, when you do your own research and when you understand your own customers, you're going to do a much better job at that. And that's why I recommended going through my course as well as cash advertising because that's going to really help you in that. But even just with my spitballing, with those ads that approach, we were able to get a CTR of 10.98% on average across this campaign, which is huge for a, like a, a, search, like a, a search campaign like that. Man, that's... Like it's like a brand campaign. Yeah, that's that's another thing. So if I go back to the actual search campaigns, got to go to the campaign level, guys. So my brand campaign, yeah, 20%. That's expected because it's my brand. People are going to be searching for Mr. Sam Baldwin or Key Commerce and they're going to want to find my website. But if I'm just searching for Garden Secateurs, 7.41%. Guys, that's huge. That's 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 impressive, uh, and and I thought maybe it's because the competition is is high. Well, the average CPC is sixty one cents. That's really low, um, especially when our default max CPC in within the keywords is seventy five percent, seventy five cents with enhanced CPC. Um, so it's only spent forty dollars, but uh, off the bat, that's a really good sign. If you're getting less than three percent CTR, that means that your ad copy needs a lot of work. But if you're getting above three percent, that's a really really good sign, guys. But like a, a 10.98 across them. This one, it does have a product brand, um, a product brand, uh, but that's still very, very impressive. 18% for this keyword. That's insane, man. I'm blowing my own mind right here. Um, anyway, so yeah, so that's a big thing off the bat. What I would do now is I'd look at the average CPC, I'd look at how many conversions we get per keyword, and then I would adjust the bids based on that. So if this had, say, three conversions after 27 clicks, that might be it's, that's that'd be amazing uh but one conversion would be incredible because one conversion would mean there's like one in 27 i don't know five percent conversion rate um that would be pretty nice especially when it's a brand terms so there's a higher chance they're going to convert through that i would then adjust the bids based on uh the profitability so i would add in i got a video on i've got a video on custom columns i recommend watching that video i recommend watching that video sorry and going through and, and putting in your profitability as a custom column um so you can see what what's actually profitable and then i would change my bids based on that. I would then also go to my ad copy over here. And so you'll see these two here. Um, ah, see this one got, that it got stopped because of uh, using, because uh, I put in the brand. So that wouldn't happen if I was actually Bunnings and it was a account for Bunnings, but I got I got flagged for putting Bunnings in there because I don't actually, it's not, I don't have Bunnings. I wonder if they've seen their analytics and been like, who's running ads for our, <laughs> our store? That's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, maybe if Bunnings sees this, they'll be like, hey, maybe Sam could actually run these for real and, and unpause the campaign. Um, but yeah, so yeah, so that's this one here. Of course, this has a much higher CTR. Um, but I would look at the two ads and see which one got the higher most conversions first. I, I care about profitability, then I care about the CTR, the click through rate. But say if I go back to the other one, that one that didn't have 
didn't have a problem. And I go back to the ad group level and let's go into garden secateurs. It's only had 14 clicks, but let's take a look at the difference in the ads. You see here, see this one here has a 7%, this one has 6%. And because we've set it to optimize automatically the ad rotation, so that's in the settings, I'll show you that in a moment. It's actually probably shown this to more people. It's got a high impressions. So Google's gonna like show that to more people depending on how it performs. And it largely uses the CTR um, from what I understand. And so I, I prefer to use conversions because I care about profitability. I don't care which one gets the most clicks. I care about profitability. Uh, but going into settings, you can adjust that so it, it won't, it will show them evenly. It won't show one ad more than the other over in the settings. And I got to go to the campaign level, my bad. So product searches and the campaign level, go to settings. And then it'll be down and probably hidden down here. Ad rotation, yep. So it'd be do not optimize, rotate ads indefinitely. So that means that you can then actually see what works and then pause and change ads. So what I would be doing is going into those ads and then um, changing the ads. Like I don't just change the ad directly. Don't ever do that because it actually wipes out the past data. What you want to do is click this and then go edit and then copy and then go edit and then paste. And it's going to create a clone of that ad. Um, make sure you do it on the ad group level because right now I'm on the product other campaign level. Go to the ad group level and do that. Um, and then you want to test out different ad copy based on what's working and, and just keep trying to improve that CTR. CTR over three to 5% is already pretty amazing. Um, so I, I'd say this, this campaign has a lot of potential. I'm curious to hear Bunnings are actually running this campaign themselves and what their strategy is because it looks like just from running a bait, spending 40 bucks, uh, depending on conversions, of course, but just with the competition, it means that the clicks are going to be super cheap. And so I imagine their campaigns are going to be really profitable. Um, anyway, guys, that's what I would do afterwards. I'd also add in the ad extensions. I've got a video on that. I, I mentioned that already, um, but that's what I would do after that. So hopefully you guys got some benefit out of me just throwing away $40 on this campaign by being an idiot and not pausing it. It's now paused, thankfully. So I'm not going to spend any more money on this. Uh, but that's what I do. One last thing. So before I go, guys, one last thing I'll do is I'd go to the search terms report here and I would actually look at what we've actually paid for. So search terms report. Sorry, I went to the wrong one. And these are all the clicks that we've paid for. It says 46 here, but there's actually 65 because Google now uh, frustratingly have changed their rules. So they're only showing some of the search queries. Which makes it, much, it makes it much harder for us as media buyers to really sculpt the traffic with negative keywords. We can do it, but we have to wait until it's had a few more clicks or at Google's discretion. But here I would look through here and go, okay, look at all these keywords. Like left-handed Velcro secretaries, maybe that's a or probably is a thing. Hey, let's get that product. Let's make an ad group and target that. It's only had one impression, but that's a super high intent, you know, traffic uh, right there. So that's that's really huge. Uh, super high intent in the search query. Um, but yeah, power Velcro powered secretaries, electric secretaries. We talked about that in the video already. But yeah, you could have a brand campaign that just targets that. A brand uh, ad group that just targets that. So yeah, anyway, guys, that's what I would look at. A few different things to optimize your account. Hope that was helpful. I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Okay guys, now that you've set up your search campaigns in your Google Ads account, I really recommend you watch some of my other videos that help you make the most out of these campaigns. There's three videos I recommend you watching after this one. I'll leave a link to all of them in the description, but here they are now. One, ad extensions. I have a whole video that shows you how to create ad extensions for your search campaigns. Ad extensions are important because it increases the actual size of your ad in the search results. This leads to more clicks because you take up more space compared to your competitors. It's super easy to do. It doesn't cost you any more by creating these ad extensions and I show you how to do it all in this video. The second video is setting up your shopping campaigns. If you haven't set up your shopping campaigns for your e-commerce store just yet, then I recommend you do it as soon as you can. It's an incredibly valuable tool to grow your ads account and grow your store. And generally, I see that they outperform these search campaigns. This doesn't mean that search campaigns aren't useful. We'll still get them profitable, but shopping campaigns generally make more in total conversion value, more sales, as well as more profitability. They're more profitable per conversion than search campaigns. The third video is a branding campaign. A branding campaign is a search campaign where you just bid on your own brand keyword. You then direct the traffic to your homepage. I've made a big video on setting these up from scratch and there's a lot of reasons why I recommend setting up these campaigns and I go through all those reasons in that video. That's it for today guys. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, let me know in the comments below. I really appreciate all the feedback and please give this video a like. If you haven't subscribed yet, go check out my channel. Check out all the videos I'm putting out to help you guys grow your e-commerce store and consider subscribing and turn on notifications. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.